Hi everyone, welcome to the Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen. I'm out here in the classroom out in Pennsylvania today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of new techniques that you can do with the Heritage Multimedia and paint it simply. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to use the, the Heritage Multimedia as both a watercolor and then we're going to move it through the cycle of gouache and then into the global. Now we really don't need to use it as global. We can use it as a pure acrylic. But what I have here is, uh, we'll come down here, is what I have is I have my colors all mixed up like you see me do on so many other videos. Uh, this is just the paint mixed up in a little container with a little bit of the uh, what I call the ex what the extender medium. This just slows down the drying time. You really don't need it like this. You could use the, the paint straight from the tube for what I'm doing here today. But since I have all my colors uh, figured out there and all mixed up, I like to use it. Now out here in this little cap, what I have is a uh, it's a thickening uh, watercolor medium. This is the Heritage and it comes in a small bottle because you only need a little bit of it but it's a watercolor medium and uh, most watercolor mediums contain anywhere between uh, you know 13 or so 13 to 17 sometimes upwards of 20 percent gum arabic in it this one has 33 percent gum arabic into it uh, this will take it the paint all the way from a watercolor all the way down into a, a gouache and stuff for you uh, it's got a slight amber color but it is uh, it does not affect the color whatsoever so we just brush mix this into the acrylic as we're going and we'll turn we'll shift the multimedia acrylics right into a watercolor now i also have just a little uh, cup of clear water out here too just to to uh, start that out uh you know you can use it in a big container or whatever so i even sometimes use dirty water because we're going to go through watercolor and into gouache and stuff let's get started here's a uh, this is a 300 pound cold press arches watercolor paper and i've done a lot of uh of uh, watercolor videos and books. I've written several books on watercolor and uh, in, in using that. I like the cold press. It's a little bit thicker. If you're doing fine detail, then you can go to the hot press and stuff. For, but for most of your painting like this, the cold press will work just great. Um, what I'm going to do is use the fusion brushes. These are, these were really, I use them a lot in paint it simply, but you know, for the blend, for the, uh, the softer techniques and stuff, but these were actually developed as watercolor brushes. So you can use them for for watercolor as well. You can have out a, a small uh, mister bottle if you want to mist the surface and and you know take out your colors. You'll be able to do all your watercolor techniques with it. And sometimes I like to, to spray just a little bit onto the surface. I use a, a variety of techniques, a variety of them. But you know just to to grab that. Sometimes I'll do dragging marks where I, I don't want that to be on there. Sometimes I lightly spray it. But if you do use a mister bottle you want to use a, a real light one. There's a lot of techniques that you can use so I want to paint you I'm going to stick to some of the stuff that you're you're really used to here show you I just finished an entire series of, of videos and stuff with it um, now when you do pure watercolor here you usually don't add white but since and, and since we're doing this with a an acrylic we can add white to soften the color usually what you will do let me just take that white back out of my brush here usually what you would do is you take a color here like a thalo or something like that and you'll thin that way down we'll add the watercolor medium to it this is going to make it reconstitute with water and come back off and you would use it like this as a as a real thin let's just put a little bit of that real thin wash here into the surface and here and drag this off i think i'll use it like this today but sometimes and you can always tell a real fine pigment because you don't get any of that granulation in there see that then that's one of the things that we formulate these colors for so it mixes up just like a pure watercolor here as well so we don't get that real granulated look to it so i'm going to push some of this around like that put a little bit of blue up here I like blue into the back of my flowers I'm gonna paint a, a rose and some daisies with you um, today and we might even put a little butterfly or something like that into it as well but uh, we'll see we'll get there um, We'll I'll just drag that drag. I like the edge. You can if you get too much like anything you can you know you can tap it off. You can work that just like you do a, a normal watercolor. That uh, you know just exactly the same exactly the same techniques that you're used to uh, working with. 
there's a a large variety uh, that you can do and um that in colors and everything so i'm gonna do i'm gonna start out with like this i'm gonna add some uh, other colors into here i'm gonna put some let's put some yellow right into this and we'll make some beautiful type of greens i always like a little burnt sienna into that as well um into that yellow and that blue so you make it pretty colors like this beautiful colors i can add that watercolor medium into that okay so and thin that out here we can add some water you know and we can drape this in you can uh go ahead and use the edges you can miss the edges of it you can pull it through with some water and and get some granulation out to here like this you know which is uh, you know i like these types of look this is where to me i used to paint you know more smooth watercolor now i like these types of granulated looks like that off to the sides you can pull and track that you know anywhere with it you can pull this down and let it kind of bleed down and granulate down you get some beautiful beautiful looks that's up to you you know you I mean you know you just play with it it's paper that's why i tell my students go ahead and play with it it's paper you don't have to worry about anything so use this out bleed this out here this will make a great little you know interest area in here let's uh, push this over a little bit more to the blue and yellow side here let's add a little more water into that and touch that in let some of this just bleed into that right there a bit for a second again you can touch that with that you can let that just kind of soak in or you can touch it with your brush you can grab a, a slightly damp brush and pull it across and get it to bleed out a little bit more there's lots of techniques and you can use all your normal watercolor techniques with it because you're basically making a watercolor and all your pigments are are really nice and and, and fine you know it it is there are certain watercolor companies that certainly have more pigments you know more pigment in it than the heritage does and and you know that's fine but these these do you know everything that you need to do in watercolor so you know it's it's up to you you everyone likes different things different products i'm going to back out just a little bit where i'm going to paint that that rose and stuff there we'll add some more color and stuff in it but you get this nice look you get night you know beautiful watercolors there for for using a color like this i'm gonna back that up just a little bit here now i'm gonna switch down uh my brush to a little bit smaller one that was a three quarter inch brush i'm gonna go down to my smaller one here and i'm gonna pull some yellow oxide down here i like the yellow oxide maybe a little bit of hansa yellow into that and let's add some watercolor medium and a little bit of water thin that out here okay so, I'm, so i get it that i want you should when you add watercolor medium add about one to one so if you you know you can use it then to reconstitute later on i'm going to uh, use this as uh, the top up here i'm going to do some some daisies and stuff out here like this so i want to uh, just touch out some color and i'm going to tap out and soften that for right now that so this is where kind of where i'm going to i'm kind of envisioning having a little daisy right out here like that sometimes uh you know if you want to have like perfect petals you go ahead and dry it you can use a hair dryer on this and go ahead and and dry the, the you know the the uh, surface here and you'll get uh um you know the petals more perfect and here i'm just gonna like give the edge of one here okay so you'll see just a little edge there of that one maybe we'll drop one right down up over here we'll drop like one is coming right down here so that'll be a good look for us carrying through here and a little bit of that color maybe there'll be a little daisy right here let's put a little of that background coloring that that as well sometimes just that's what i love about watercolor is you can push some of these other tones right into that same time here let's give a little button to the top of that one that'll come in there we're not done anywhere near done with that but that'll that'll get us started there now so i've got some back areas here let's also set up some back areas of some leaves i love i love pine green and burnt sienna those of you that have watched a lot of my videos know that that's one of my favorite colors um I like that a lot. I'm going to add some watercolor medium, add some water to that. Pine green and burnt sienna here. 
And, uh, you know, I'll come in and say, okay, let's just set back that little edge. Now, now you have time there to that if you want to soften that out or take that out just a bit to, to break that edge. And that's what I like to do is do is it soft and, you know, just use the chisel edge there. Sometimes I'll leave it a little bit more, sometimes a little softer. So I'll put in a little heavier color there, sometimes like a little... A, uh, septals or something that come off of the, the petal, little petals or, or something like that. If you want, uh, you can give, you know, the idea of a, of, a, of a leaf out through here like that. Just something like that in there. Let's drop one. Let's use our chisel here and just drop that down there like that. And uh, an idea of a petal or two coming off of that one. We're going to have some white daisies and some other stuff going on. But we might want to chisel down here and, and just pull out here some stems like this. And this is where, again, use that paper towel you have in your hand there. Break the edge. I like to break that edge. Tap through like that. It's really a lot of fun. It's only paper here. It's only paper. Let's... um. Now I'm going to start, so I've got some watercolor basics set up in here. I'm going to add just a few more uh, watercolor uh, like leaves. I like to do that, so maybe I'll come out over here and set in the shape of a, a, a nice, like a rose leaf or something, because I'm going to put a rose in here. And then what I'll do once I set that in there, now you have a lot of different ways you can do watercolor. I'm going to take a clean paper towel. Sometimes I take just a clean paper towel like this. And don't worry, you got long, you got a long time. It's wet. It's going to stay wet. And I'll tap one edge of it there, and I, all of a sudden I have a shadow to it. And you can come back and adjust the shadow or whatever you want there. But that works really well. Let's put a couple of leaves out there. A couple of leaves here. Pull this out like that. And let's put the highlight side into that leaf. Here, just a little light. Maybe sometimes I'll restroke the shadow side just a touch. Let's get that a little darker. And then I'll sometimes I'll put together little um, little edges or little vein lines to it or so. I want to save this area for my rose. So I have a few leaves going out. That makes it pretty. You know, just you can have little suggestions of leaves here, just little marks and movements going out there. Tap it with your, tap any of that extra color out there with your towel. Okay, now I'll put putting, I'm going to start opaquing up and heading towards gouache and other colors here into the center. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do now is start putting, positioning myself to paint my my uh, my white rose that I want in here. So I'm going to have some darks that are going to go in and around, heavier color. And so what I'm going to do is take just some of the colors I've been using. Here's a little bit of blue, a little burnt sienna. All these colors together make beautiful gray colors. Put a little green into that. Just put a little white into that, and let's see this beautiful gray that we get. I maybe want it a touch to the blue side, so I'll add a little bit more of my phthalo blue here into this. And i got just a bit of glare coming from the light somewhere today, so we'll just soften it out. I'm going to add a bit of my medium to that, a little bit of my watercolor medium in here, and I want this just soft gray, so a little more white. Now, when you start adding white to color, that's basically a gouache. Gouache is opaque watercolor, and gouaches are really how companies make them. And I used to make them for a long time for a lot of companies. Um, we just add basically a white to some of the same pigments that you use in watercolor. So I'm going to use this and work this out into the center area here, right like this, right where I'm going to have this uh, white rose kind of painting in here. And so I'm going to work this a little heavy and out and let some of this draw out. Now, I like the look where I get this. This is the granulated look. And I think that with the watercolor look is, is fantastic. I like it. Uh, if you don't like it, then you just take your soft brush. And you can take a soft brush like this. And I'll show you right up here. I like that. I'm going to leave that. But take your soft brush with some water like that and just take it out and move the color out. And that'll soften it out for you if you don't like that. So you may want to disappear some of that a little bit just like that or soften out an edge. You can just do it like that. Just run it through and that'll soften that out for you. 
like that. But I want some of this dark. Now, why do I need this dark? Because I'm going to be painting white right back up in here. So I want to be able to have white for my white rose and maybe some daisies. And so now what I'm going to do is take back just a little bit. Leave that dark out through there and just take back just a little bit of that that color. This will allow me to, now what I'm going to do is really go to the opaque side. I'm going to take some yellow, uh, some yellow oxide and white and I'm going to get more uh, color here. I'm going to start opaquing out my paper here. This is where I'm now going to switch over and it's really pretty. You know, we're going to, we're going to have watercolor technique go right into a, uh, to a gouache technique and go right into an opaque what we call global technique. So I'm going to put this rose out here like this. A standard rose that you see me paint for you. You know, I don't want to get too complicated here when I'm showing you like some of the techniques that we do. But um, I just finished filming a new DVD with a bunch of these techniques on some real complicated florals. And they were a lot of fun. But I'm going to get opaque here now and build up this, this will be a rose shape right here. And you'll see that the rose, the white, starts to advance. So I have this watercolor look, and which I still need to refine a little bit more, but I'm waiting for some of this to dry. Um, and then I'm going to build this look here. So I'm building this color specifically off the paper here, so it's going to stand out. Now, let's take a bit of our cooler colors. Let's take first, we'll take a little burnt sienna and the real cool, like a quinacridone violet or if you have the six color set, uh, grab some red violet here and we'll push in the center dark, the center throat of that rose. Just kind of tap and move it around. Don't, don't stroke big strokes. Use small little strokes here. That fits better with a, a look of a watercolor. Small little strokes. Let's uh, come in and and push in a little bit of the shadow side here of the rose down like that maybe out here so I have a shadow bit to the rose there okay a good thing to always do as an artist is to touch some of those colors into some other areas that you're doing that's traveling your color so that that gives you harmony to some of your other flowers and everything that you're painting so we'll go ahead and do that there now I also want to touch just a little more yellow into this rose nice warm yellow here so that'll paint that one up there like that okay I'm gonna let that tack for just a second get a little bit tacky and I'm gonna come back up here with some of my white and some maybe some of this gray and let's set in some white flowers just real casual like this just white flowers and if they don't show up for enough of you, you need a little more gray back behind what you're doing and, you know, in, in the painting itself. And that you can do. You can always come back and add more. But I'm just going to set these in here like that. Let's set another, maybe just the idea of a light blossom. I like to paint really fast. And I know it drives some of my students absolutely crazy when I do that. But... I have to paint fast, otherwise I start to play in it. So I like to paint really, really fast. And I always tell my students uh, or, you know, people that are, are studying uh, with these real quick composition type techniques with me that watch the video through several times so you know where I'm going with each step. Then you can paint along with it. And the goal is to paint fast. You paint fast, you don't play, you let the little marks, the little colors stay where they are, and you have some fun. Now, before I go painting any more into this, I'm going to increase the contrast of the painting. And I'm going to do that through my greens, my leaves. So I'm going to add a little watercolor medium. You can add it and take your colors right to a gouache. I'm going to add a little watercolor medium, pine green, and some um, pine green and some burnt sienna here. And I'm just going to add and do a little bit of negative painting here. I'm going to vary the color a little bit, but don't forget to add a little bit of that watercolor medium. And why? Because if you want to change that later, you can. Really easy. You can change it. The watercolor medium will allow you to change it. And what I'm doing is I'm looking physically for the, the outside edge of the flower. That's what I'm painting, the outside edge. Now I'm going to let this come down here because we'll get a little darker on that daisy here. Let's look for the outside edge of this little petal here. 
and we'll just push some of that color in there. Doesn't that look great? Let's let's find the outside edge here of the daisy. We don't have to be perfect because we're going to go opaque and textured on these daisies in just a minute. So we just have to find the edges of it a bit. Let's continue down and add some that extra dark. And you know I like to, those of you to watch the roses that I paint for you, you, you know I like to sometimes add little chisel marks there for like little ideas of little, you know, thorns and stuff like that. You can soften this with some of the gray that you have there already. A little watercolor medium in it, maybe a little water here and that'll soften the color so it doesn't have quite as much impact up here at the top. If I want to soften that I can take a clean brush here with a little water and just go right through it like that. See just it turned because you have that watercolor medium in it. It turns it right into a watercolor and softens it out for you. So and I can pull that color out further if I want but I don't think I need it. I can thin that out though. A good thing to do is thin it out and just drag it out a little bit. That just takes that color out a little further there. And that looks really nice, I think. We'll take a little bit of that color. Let's go into the shadow of the rose here with a little bit of that color. Here, like this. Here we go. And that adds, I mean, it adds so much. You can take some of that into the shadow of your little daisies here as well. Here, like that. Paint fast, paint it simply. That's what we like to do. This is the secret of paint it simply. It's these quick, fun, easy painting techniques. It takes some practice because you got to get yourself some confidence with it. It takes practice. You can't, you know, you have to do a lot uh, of practicing. You really do. Um, let's take some of that gray. So I love that burnt sienna and green. Just such a lovely color together. And let's gray soften that down. Let's add a little bit up here to these daisies here. I'm going to add some um, thick opaque color to those things here too uh, in just a minute. And I'm going to add also some heavier strokes of that yellow that was Hansa yellow and yellow oxide. I'm going to add some of that into some of this center area here. So I carry that color. See how that carries the color into the composition? I'm always looking for that. Always, always look for that. That's what makes you an artist, is your ability to carry some of these beautiful colors and stuff. So, all right. Now, I'm going to go back. Now I'm heading over to from the gouache more into my global. I'm going to go opaque. You could really classify this as a heavy gouache, but it's just slow drying. I'm going to take some of my white now. This is my white, white, and... Uh, usually I don't jump quite to white. I'll go a little bit of yellow into that. Just a little bit. Opaque color. And this is where I'm going to build this rose up just a bit more here. Let's get the light side onto it here. Like that. Just a little quick, quick touch and lift off, drag off. You get a little what we call granulation to the stroke here. Just little quick kind of curving strokes here. Lightly, lightly touching the surface of the of the flower. This is what the fusion brush is designed to do. These light strokes like this. Let's build color here. Let's build color. And the those of you that haven't painted on the arches paper like this before, it's fantastic for these types of techniques, especially with this, as you get to these, uh, as you get to the this thicker part, my white is very, very thick. As you get to this thicker part of the painting, this is what my container of white looks like. You know, I let my whites really get thick, 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 thick. You know, you can paint with them right directly out of the tube is one way you can do this. But I like them even to put them out, add a little extender, and let them thicken up a little bit more um, before I paint. Because then they really are thick. And I can get some nice look techniques there. Nice looks with that thick paint. Let's take some of this white. Let's use these up here onto our daisies here. Um, here, just kind of angle this out a bit here, like that. So you got a pretty little flower angling out there, like that. Let's paint this one here. Pull in. Just get suggestive. Let these, 
you know, your main flowers, that rose, let these be a little bit softer here. Here, just coming out like that. That's kind of pretty. Sometimes I'll, I'll, um, I set my white over here. Sometimes I, um, come in and set a, a little petal across so it looks like this one's growing out. So I'll come out like that, set a little petal across like that so it grows out. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I like to watch this opaque color there. Let's just pull out here just to make sure I get that nice light color in there. That's kind of pretty. Let's go into some uh, Hansa yellow and some white nice light bright little white up here in yellow and let's put a bit of that up here onto our up onto our daisies now you see these uh, these little guys up here really jump out here now i i like to do the when i'm doing this you, you can do more uh perfect you know stroke daisies uh, more perfect shapes like this i like these to be a little bit casual not you know just barely see the edges of them or something like that and you know i'm a i'm an artist that i look for different looks i'm constantly looking for different looks so you know it's something that uh you know i don't paint daisies just one way so you'll find me paint paint them a variety of ways here little cuts like that little little bits i like little light touches into the centers there sometimes a little dark contrast like a little burnt sienna really helps there so we'll put a little dark let's put a little burnt sienna and yellow oxide that's really i mean excuse me burnt sienna and hansa yellow those are really pretty colors together let's push that little button up a bit on that one and then um we'll put a little yellow little haunts of yellow and light up there on the top of it get some of this edge here very casual though I like this very very casual lose that edge let that flower in. here's your here's your center of interest let's drop some of that burnt sienna right down into the base of this little daisy this little white one touch that around let's drop it into the base of that one here touch it around push that around a little bit you can um, grab that Hansa yellow and light and add that in as a nice little soft center if you want to keep the watercolor technique or watercolor look to the painting keep your colors really soft here um, you know you're opaque I'm opaque now with this color but I will leave them just a little bit softer, a little bit of white in there almost, so I keep that gouache look, but that softness to it, and it'll go with the watercolor look, even though you're getting opaque color into this. So that looks pretty good. Let's put an edge out to here. Sometimes quite a bit lighter and a little edge, and see that just makes that part of this little flower come forward and I, I don't try to do a perfect little flower I could go in there and do a perfect little flower but I don't want to I want I like these lost I like to look at my petals here in relationship to my rose my rose is the queen of the of the painting here so these others I don't want to do so much that they compete with this rose if I do I have to add more to the rose and I really I'm kind of liking the way this rose is. I'm going to add just a little more opacity, a little more opaque color up there into this side here. Maybe a little bit more of an edge there. So it's more of a petal. See, you can, you can physically see there the texture in that stroke. Do you see that right there, the texture that's right there? So now I'm way away from the watercolor. I'm into texturing the stroke here. And it just gives you, a, you know, it gives you a beautiful look here going this way. It's a new look. Um, not new. There's been artists that do this kind of stuff for a long time. But, you know, you don't you don't get too many artists anymore that, that uh, you know, bridge the gap between the two looks. Now, I'll put a little warm. I like a little warmth touch. This is just some Hansa yellow and pine green. And I like a little warm now. You could, I have that cool. 
you know, I had that cool blue up there to begin with. And that's something that I could add. I'll just take a little blue right into some of this white. Let's even take it towards the watercolor here. And uh, add a little watercolor medium, a little water here. And just add a few little touches of that to a few areas here. And that just gets a, a different little cool color into the painting as well. See, just a little cool touch. Yeah, that's kind of pretty. One thing I always tell my students when you're doing techniques like this is you have a color like that, it's good to take it completely to the watercolor, thin it out, take it completely to the watercolor, get your watercolor medium and your water in there, and then add some of those strokes into the background as the watercolor, because then the color travels through and even goes into, the viewer sees it even into the transparency of the background. And that's what makes it real pretty. So here you see that color, and it's going right into the watercolor here now of this background. And that just adds so much. Now, if I want more interest to the rose, I can take a tiny little bit of my uh, red violet here right on the corner. I can just give it its final little deep little contrasting center. How much you do on that. Watercolors, you know, you can you can play with that. <clears throat> there, but you see that nice deep contrasting center a little bit like right in here onto this uh, Daisy will will bring its contrast back up how much you put on there. That's up to you How much of an edge or how much light that you want to have on there? That's up to you. I like the the uh, the casual nature of the of the soft colors. I maybe will take a yellow oxide here. Let's add some watercolor medium and let's add a little bit of water to this and maybe uh, suggest out here like another one or two little flower shapes maybe a little bit more of a yellow coming here with this one just dropping down off to the side with the yellow that carries it through maybe just a hit of yellow here and there that's kind of pretty how much contrast you put in there that's up to you but it's a real fast real fun little uh, painting technique for you. This is taking the heritage um, right into through the the watercolors or spectrum into the gouache spectrum of the painting and um, really a lot of fun and you can do you know you can do this with like a large variety of a uh, large variety of designs and stuff. They're really a lot of fun. Okay, so there you go. There's a fun little painting for you, working those, working the uh, the paint, starting out with the watercolor, softening out. You can continue on up with the watercolor and going right on into some gouache and into some uh, uh, thick opaque paint at the end, using the same colors, same palette, same everything, and getting that look. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, there's other videos I have on just painting pure watercolor where we use the graduated stroke, granulation. We use, you know, taking out techniques, all the watercolor techniques that you're, you're used to using. You can do the same thing. The, the watercolor medium, you can put that out and put it on there. And, you know, two days later, you can come back and, and take it out because you've made the paint reconstitutable with water, just like a regular watercolor. All right. Anyway. Hope you enjoyed it. I had a great time painting with you. Look for more of our DVDs and stuff over on the Jansen Art Store. You also find us on Amazon. Amazon's now picked us up and is carrying a lot of our stuff and they're adding more things. They've just finished adding the complete line of the Heritage Colors are now on Amazon. So you can look for that there and we have to get watercolor medium up there next. But enjoy that and uh, if you have any questions or anything like that you can always email us don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button give me a thumbs up if you like these to see some more of these types of techniques and i'll do it for you okay drop a little comment i'll do that the more you comment the more i'll do for you all right all right talk to you guys later thanks a lot have a great painting day see you later Bye bye